First of all, it's 3.15, we started at 2.30, and I'm bored. Note that. So what we're doing is we're doing an anarchist guide workshop at the Vogler House in Old Salem. So we've um, allowed our group of uh, Mesda Summer Institute students and uh, professors to come through with our anarchist tags uh, and just experience this house and give us their kind of crowdsourced comments about how they would interpret this house and how they would make the visitor experience better. We're decentralizing the experience. The typical experience at a house museum is that you get a tour guide, you stand in the hallway and there's ropes up because you can see right here, we have chains that actually make it so you can't come in here. So, and so what we're doing is we're starting to see what ways we um, censor our visitors in their experience with simple things like chains, text boxes, placement of furniture. So after today, we'll be compiling all this information and then we'll be having a discussion, I think in a week or so, about ways that we can start to incorporate kind of new innovative ideas. So this is interesting. It's not something I tell participants at workshops, but it's a really significant part. So we came here at 2.30. It is now 3.25. Part of these workshops is to see when you get bored, that's number one, and number two, which rooms you congregate to and start acting like a normal person. And so what's happened is we've got two rooms that we have totally rearranged the furniture because they weren't habitable the way they were before. They were stage sets. And now if you can just scan these two rooms, what you'll see is at 325, all of a sudden, this group feels ownership of this site. And someone on Facebook Live said, you've got world experts on this time period. It's a shame they're not involved. Well, guess what? They're not involved on purpose, right? Because I believe that these sites should tell a story without someone telling the story for it. So when we first started, everybody was really tentative. Didn't want to touch anything. It took a while to take some chains down. I had to take the chains down. I had to kind of force some issues. A few of you went up to the attic. Who went up to the attic? And so that attic is not interpreted. I'm looking out that window there. I don't know there because somebody every day is looking out that window, wondering who carried all this furniture up those steps and probably in that attic. Wondering all of that as soon as I went up there, it's definitely hot up there, which it probably would have been. And there's a lot of space, and there's probably a lot of individuals that were up and down. Old well, Salem is now, since December, moving on a new project to locate every slave dwelling in Salem. Um, and you are sitting right now in a house where there is a slave dwelling, which is upstairs in the attic. Now, for a minute, let's talk a little bit about objects, because that's what you guys are here, right? You each have picked an object. It is interesting because the main changes we made were contextual, right? Yes. Objects became stories based on the sequence of kind of relationships. On that table over there, we wrote a story about somebody doing needlework, sitting with somebody reading, sitting across from somebody else, I forget what they were doing. How do you see this idea affecting research that you do? When I get to hold a, a, a cookie roller that Vogler actually carved with his own hand, I'm right there with him. I say just it's putting actual people and actual stories and actual lives. But the truth is, if you have a site that's not interesting, we won't even be able to have our brains open to the point that we're going to listen to the people.